everyone, it's Kelsey from Literary Gladiators and I'm here today to go over the top six books on my bookshelf that I still haven't read yet but am looking forward to reading the most. The first one that I'm going to go over is Goners by Jordan, Gordon Kerr and it's the subtitle of it is The Final Hours of the Notable and the Notorious. This book goes over the final hours and days of a lot of famous people. Some of them are Sylvia Plath, um, who else? Sylvia Plath. Buddy Holly, Charles Dickens, a lot of really, you know, interesting, famous people. And it goes over just like, you know, some of the details of their passings and some of the mystery that surrounded that. So um, this was given to me as a gift and I'm, you know, been really looking forward to reading it. But because it's a more of a nonfiction book, I don't feel compelled to read it as much as I do other books. The next one is Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury, which we are all familiar with. Very critically acclaimed, very popular, which obviously is one of the main reasons why I want to read it because everybody, you know, talks about how amazing it is. But also, I just really like the premise of it um, about the book burning and things like that. I like those kind of dystopic worlds that get rid of the things that I love which is kind of like messed up but I just find it really intriguing imagining a world like that like how would I live there that kind of thing so I pro I probably read the first couple pages of this like a billion times and I actually like to open this book up to random pages and read them but for some reason I just haven't gotten far enough please excuse my dog he insisted on being in here so Fahrenheit 451 has been something that's on, been on my to read list forever, but hasn't been something that I've like needed to read. Like I need to read it eventually, but it hasn't been something that like, you know, somebody was just like, you need to go read that right now. So, you know, maybe someday somebody will say that to me and I will actually go read it, <laughs> but it's definitely on my to read to be read list. Um, the next one is Another Day by David Levithan. This is the sequel, kind of, to Every Day, but not really because it's essentially Every Day told from a different perspective. And I really loved Every Day, so that's why I was really excited to get this. One, because I got it before it was ever released. Um, and another exciting thing is that I have a signed copy of it. But even though I got it before it was released, and I was like, ooh, and it's signed, oh, I still haven't read it yet. I did start it, but you all know me, I'm a serial starter. So this is definitely something that I see myself reading definitely before Fahrenheit 451, but not soon, you know. Okay, so the next one is Another Gift. Uh, it's No Exit by John Paul Sartre my best friend was telling me how much he loved it and he was telling me about the pregnant so I was like oh that's really interesting so he got it for me for my birthday or for Christmas some, for, or something like that and I just really like the existential musings of it and that really intrigues me so I'm excited to read it and it's really not that long at all so like I should really just sit down and read it one day because you know it's not gonna take me that long but I just haven't gotten that far yet. Maybe I will. Now that I'm realizing how short it is, maybe I'll actually go and read it. And then maybe my next video could be on this. But um, I really like plays. And I really, you know, like things that are very abstract discussions of things. That's why I liked Every Day so much. Because it's such, such an abstract discussion of gender. So I'm really excited to read this and even though I'm really excited to read it I haven't gotten that far yet but here's hoping next is Middlesex by Jeffrey Eugenides I think that's how you pronounce it um this one I really like because there's this one intriguing part on the back of it that says to understand why Calliope is not like other girls she has to uncover a guilty family secret in the astonishing genetic history that turns Callie into Cal and it definitely has that intriguing gender element that I like so much. Um, but this is also one of those books that I, you know, you know, you always have those books that every time you walk into Barnes & Noble, you pick up that one book because you're like, ooh, I like the title of that. And you're like, ooh, I like the cover. And then you read the back of it and you're like, wow, that's so interesting. And then you're like, whoa, books are expensive. Oh, but I'll get it another time. But then you just 
don't and then eventually I went back and I was like I know exactly what book I'm gonna get with this brand new gift card I have and this is the book that I got so I'm really looking forward to reading this it's a bit of a thick book so that's probably what's putting me off I really like a skinny book and I can just read right through it and I'm like oh I, I read a book finally that wasn't for class but you know and the final book is Super Sad True Love Story by Gary, whose last name I'm not going to pronounce because I'm going to butcher it and probably should have looked up how to pronounce it before I made this video, but you win some, you lose some. Um, I made it 39 pages into the book. this book, wasn't really feeling it. I bought it on a friend's recommendation. He told me how much he loved it and I was like, well, we like a lot of the same books. We have really good book taste. And so I was like, I'll give it a try. Wasn't a big fan. But now that I'm reading more, you know, like dystopic, futuristic novels that are geared more towards adults and have like a certain writing style that I'm normally not used to, I want to go back and give it another chance. Because I'm hoping that after reading stuff like The Word Exchange and Brave New World that I might like it more than I previously did so this is something I'm excited to give a second shot but it's also has been on my to be to be read list this whole time because even though I didn't like it at first I always intended on finishing it eventually so those are my top six books on my bookshelf that I really hope to read um I really hope that I read these within the next year uh I'll be honest with myself and with you, probably won't happen, but hopefully I'll get at least one or two of these out of the way, you know, maybe throughout the rest of this summer or during a winter break. As noted in my, you know, goals for the year video, I wanted to be able to read more, especially for pleasure, which unfortunately has been kind of unsuccessful. I have read a few books since I've been home from school, but not as many as I'd like. You know work gets me really tired and stuff i'm definitely hoping to push past this and definitely spend my last month home reading and i hope until next time you continue reading as well